Welcome guys, it's time for a new web series of ours and it's a hammer and spanner. Uh, this is episode one and in this series we will start off by showing you off the CLK. We will go through a different part of the car and show you a little bit of the background and why we built it this way. Uh, so in this episode we will check out uh, the body kit, the rims and the suspension. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the body kit to start. To start from the beginning, I would like to explain that uh, the idea of starting to build the CLK came from uh, when Rocket Bunny released their body kit uh, for the CLK back in, I think it was 2014 or 13, I don't know. Uh, at this time, we decided that uh, we were in the making of a new car and we didn't know what car we wanted to build. So, after seeing that car and that render, I was completely hooked. Uh, but after looking into the car a bit, we noticed that uh, partly the body kit was really expensive uh, and uh, the car was not wide enough for the steering angle that we needed. So uh, we decided that we want to do something of our own and uh, it all started out with my friend Sebastian Simonsson, Say the Works. He helped me design the first version that was just like a stock CLK slammed with the uh, regular fender flares. And uh, we really loved that version, but the car came out so wide that we didn't kind of like the finishing touches on the body kit. So we decided to do a, a new kit instead. And uh, there is where this comes from. Uh, this was made in two different forms. Uh, I will show you the render here, how it looks, version one and version two. Uh, we had some problem of making it. so. We have had two different people making the molds and stuff and uh, the guy who really put it to the next level was my friend Joachim Edin. He helped us uh, make this version that you see now. Uh, a small interesting fact is that the car is actually 36 centimeters wider than the stock body. Uh, so 18 centimeters per side. And as you can see here, we did uh, like quite a classic uh, like E30 M3 style uh, of weight widening the fender up above first and then did the, the flare to make it mold in a bit better to the body. So uh, uh, as the body goes now we have cut the car off here. So all the this is plastic, the complete rear end, the bumper, the fenders, we have uh, plastic doors to save weight of course. And uh, we have a C36, no, uh, C63 CLK uh, side skirt that has been widened a bit to meet up the gap for the car because it's so wide we wanted it to measure up a bit. Uh, uh, in the front it's uh, fiberglass as well as everything else. Uh, this is uh, also really much wider than the stock one and a lot higher in the wheel wells. And, uh, the complete car is built by fiberglass, the hood, the fenders, the bumpers, the doors. The only thing that's actually stuck right now is the roof, the A pillar and the C pillar. So uh, there's been so much work put into this because it's been a bit of a roller coaster of getting it to the shape it is today. And I'm really thankful for my friend Joachim Edin who helped us uh, make the kit what it is today. There's still some small imperfections, but uh, we think it looks really good and uh, hopefully we will take the body kit to the next level for 2009, uh, 2020 instead. So we'll update you about that further along. So uh, that's pretty much the body kit. And if we try to move on to the rims, uh, we decided early on after uh, having some discussions with the Cosmes that we wanted to do the XT206R rims. So uh, on the car we've always been running, at least on the CLK, uh, 18 by 9.5 ET10 in the front and uh, 18 by 11 in the rear with ET8. 
Uh, and on the front rims we drive a 225-40-18 semi-slicks. And on the rear we do a 265-35-18 rim uh, tire. I mean, so uh, we really like how the look is, and uh, there have been so much testing going on with these rims because we've pushed them to the limits. We've uh, ridden them without tires on them. We've smacked the walls and everything, and uh, we only managed to break a few. And uh, those times we're lucky they broke because otherwise the car would be totally total for sure. So. We're really happy about the quality and the look, so uh, yeah, that's about the rims. So uh, let's take out the wheels and uh, check out the suspension a bit. One of the best things about having an 11 inch is that they never tip over. <laughs> With the front suspension, uh, we we'll take a look at the brakes uh, because they're the first thing we see. Uh, this is a brake caliper from a Mercedes uh, S600. I don't know, know the exact uh, year it's from, but it's a six piston caliper with a 345 millimeter disc. And we also run a spacer with a bolt pattern uh, conversion to Japanese bolt pattern, the 114.3 to fit the rims and also get the clearance for the caliper. And then we have the KW two-way KW competition two-way damper in the front. We like to protect them with these uh, socks to make sure we don't get debris into the gaskets and stuff like that. Uh, the shock absorber is a custom uh, one for us. I have to clear the wheel on the other side. <laughs> Like that. So you can check here. Uh, this is a custom setup. Uh, you can of course order a CLK version for the street kits and stuff like that, but uh, this one is a bit custom because it's a competition version. Uh, so as you can see, we still use the stock spindle for the CLK. Uh, and uh, the only thing is modified on the knuckle is that we have drilled up the hole a bit to fit the bigger caliper because they have a bigger bolt than the stock ones. And uh, then we have fitted uh, uh, this billet aluminium bracket on the bottom. This helps accelerate the steering angle. So we get about 55 degrees out of it. And as you can see, we also have a custom uh, lower control arm. Uh, this has been a work in progress for a while. Uh, we're currently looking into maybe making a few kits available for other people because we've got quite a few people asking for it actually. Um, and from the stock car you have two spindles that uh, rotates uh, and the center rotates between them. Uh, to remove that and make it easier to build the lock kit we decided to uh, use the two, one, two spindle holes in the knuckle uh, to center piece one underneath. So this uniball actually is connected exactly between those two points to get the center of the spindle. And uh, then we used the original subframe. So this is still the aluminium one from the 270 diesel. Uh, we have built this bracket to lower the geometry or the suspension pickup point here for the front control arm. Otherwise, it's completely stock. Uh, we're also using the original uh, steering rack from the CLK, but we have changed the steering arm to a sprinter version instead to make it longer and also a bit sturdier for the, all the forces that drifting introduces to the drivetrain. So yeah, uh, if we look up here, uh, we have done ourselves a top mount that's completely custom. 
I have an old version here to show you a bit how it works. It's uh, bolted up through these three holes and uh, then we have a relocation bracket that slides in these four slots and that is the one that the uh, uh, suspension uh, strut is uh, connected to. So you can see we have moved it really f uh, far forward and that is to reduce caster because we actually moved the wheel front a bit uh, if you compare it to a stock car and that is to clear the wheel wells in the back because it's really tight when you have that much angle with the a nine and a half inch rim so that's the reason why and the reason we have those slots is that uh, we can actually adjust uh, the camber in the top mount by uh, just uh, loosening the four bolts and uh, shoving it forward and out so it's a really good way to make sure we get the same camber on both sides of the car so quick spec we uh, we run a 12 kilo spring in the front uh, the car is pretty heavy. Uh, this year we have been running it around 1400 kilos without me. So it's a pretty heavy car, but uh, we're trying to improve that this winter. Uh, among some things, we're probably going to go down in size on the brakes a bit too, because we don't need these beefy brakes for drifting. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the front suspension. Uh, if I missed anything out, uh, you are free to comment below and I will try to answer it as good as I can. Um, so yeah, as I told you, it's uh, 55 degrees of steering angle and it's uh, not completely zero Ackerman. I like to have it a bit more on the leading tire uh, because that's my preference, but everybody's different. So I guess you have to figure it out yourself what you like most. So yeah, let's uh, move to the rear suspension. Well, uh, now we're at the rear suspension. Uh, start off with the brakes again. Uh, this is a S. No, it's a 500E brake caliper. I think it's from uh, early 2000 or something like that. 297 millimeter disc, and then we have a bolt c uh, conversion here as well. Uh, one thing that is a bit special here is that we have a stock spindle from uh, CLK, uh, but we have a BMW E34 uh, hub assembly. So we have the a hub from an E34 and also on the inside you have the E34 uh, inner hub part that uh, makes us it makes it possible for us to run a, a drive shaft from a 540 E34 so we have made a custom length shaft to um, because the car is so much wider than a E34 of course um, otherwise from that we're using unibol arms for everything in the suspension a suspension and uh, all of these arms are about seven centimeters longer than a stock one and uh, so that's how we have widen, widened the track of the car instead of a, a huge spacer that would uh, mess up the geometry of the rear suspension uh, otherwise we're using a stock uh, subframe uh, but we put a lot of time and effort into making this last actually if you look closer here you can see uh, try to move the light if you see this small bracket, this is one of the reinforcements that we do and each single pickup point of the subframe has been reinforced to take all of the load that uh, the grip of this car puts it through. So uh, one of the reasons we have so much grip is thanks to this. Uh, this is a KW three-way competition uh, coilover. It's uh, fully adjustable of course. It's uh, three-way version so we have the possibility of uh, adjusting both uh, rebound and compression high speed and compression low speed so we have so much to learn about this setup but uh, it's still uh, getting us so much more grip than we're used to and uh, we really like this setup and we're also saving about two kilos per shock compared to our old setup so yeah that's really good uh, and this control arm the lower one 
It's a, a control arm that we have built to make sure that we don't have to have a separate coil, spring and a damper. So this makes it a bit more easy to adjust and also less things the, that are in the way for the drive shaft because it's tight as it is already. So uh, in the rear we also drive a 12 kilo spring. Uh, because we are kind of even in the weight, we are 50-50 almost on the car because of the rear, mo rear mount the radiator and the dry sump tank in the back and also the fuel cell and the battery and some stuff so it's a quite a good uh, weight distribution so far but uh, we'd like to lower it as I told you before so yeah uh, that's about it for suspension uh, as I told you let us know if we missed out on something and we will try to cover that uh, in the future well, that's a wrap for episode 1 of Hammer and Spanner. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next episode. Talk to you soon.